In this video, I'm going to be sharing my step-by-step -step process on how we budget and plan for our vacation. We do not like to stress about money when we're on vacation, so a little bit of planning in the beginning makes a world of a difference. This Google Sheets will be available to download in the description below. It's completely free and I made it just for you, so have an amazing time on your vacation. Okay, let's get started. On the bottom of the Google Sheets, you're gonna see some tabs. We have the Travel Research tab, Travel Budget tab, Expense Tracker, To-Do List, Packing List, Daily Itinerary, and another Daily Itinerary. I'm gonna go over each of these tabs in a little bit. Let's review the Travel Research tab. I love this sheet because it keeps all my research organized and in one place. Also, if you wanna make this spreadsheet view a little bigger, just go here to the top, click this little arrow, and then you can make it bigger. If you wanna make it smaller, just go ahead and click that button again, and you can either type in a number or use one of the numbers they have already. Also, if you made a mistake, just click this little arrow right here and it's gonna undo what you just did. If you wanna redo what you just did, click this button right here that says redo. Okay, this first section is the overview section. You'll see at the top we have some labels like destination, departure date, return date. So my first destination is going to be Tokyo. My departure date is going to be March 26th. April 11th is when I'm coming back. Total travelers 2. To destination, we're going to be taking a plane. We're going to stay in a hotel. And our transportation once we get there is subway, train, bus, and walking. We would love to experience cherry blossoms, food, and exploring. For our notes section, we're going to be visiting Kyoto in the middle of our trip. I love this overview section because it's basically your bird's eye view of what in the world is going on and the major points of the trip. If someone were to ask you where you're going, this is kind of like the quick information you would be telling them. Let's enter in more details. If you don't know the information now, that's completely fine. You can leave it empty and fill it in later. This is just an overview, but later on, once everything is good to go, I'll check the box ready to go. Also, I would love to hear where you're going, so let me know in the comment section where you plan to travel. For accommodations, this is where you can keep tabs of the different places you are checking out. You can enter in the hotel name, the address, check-in dates and times, number of nights, and the cost per night. The text that is included in a formula is in purple, so those are the numbers you can change and it will automatically calculate for you in this column with the red text. Because not everyone is from the United States, I didn't put any currency symbols. These are pretty much rough estimate prices of the hotels you are researching. When you book your hotel and get the official price after all the fees and taxes, we are actually going to enter in the total amount into the travel budget tab, which I'll cover a little later. You can also make a little note of it right here to the right. Remember, this is the travel research tab, so it's okay if these are not all the places you are actually going to be booking. I made sure to give plenty of rows so you can look at a few different places. After doing your research, you can click the top pick box right here on the left. Remember, if you made a mistake, just click this little side arrow right here. If you are finding value in this video, I would super love it if you would like and subscribe so I know what kind of content to continue making for you all. For transportation flights research, I like to separate my flight information by the direction I'm going, so to vacation and from vacation. My to is on the top and my from is on the bottom. Enter in your airline, destination, airport terminal. Check this box if you have your ride to the airport already set. Add in your flight details. Check this box if you have a ride to your hotel. In this column, you can enter your ticket price. If you have to pay for additional luggage, you can enter it right here. It will automatically calculate for you in this column with the red text. Add your notes to the right. If you have additional family members with different ticket prices, I added a few more rows. You can alternatively just put in the total price here if you just want to add all your family members now as one lump sum. When everything is booked, click the booked box right here on the left. Okay, now on to other transportation research. This section is for if you have a car rental or a rail pass or something like that. For us, when we went to Japan, we got the rail pass, so I'll enter that in here. Insert the address, add your start times and end times as needed, add your cost and any additional fees, and it will automatically calculate for you in this column with the red text. Also, to the right, you will have the sum of the total cost for each section if you need it. Lastly, we have the activities research section. Just fill in the information as so. Then when you get to the math section, this column will multiply and automatically calculate for you the total cost in this column with the red text. You can add more notes and links to the right column. Let's zoom back out. 
I also made an extra category if you would like down at the bottom. All right, that is your travel research tab. Basically, it's an organized place to keep track of all your findings and fun activities. Nothing is worse than being surprised that you have no money or overspent by a landslide. I'm going to show you how to budget appropriately for your vacation. When it comes to crushing it with your finances, it's best to reverse engineer. Always begin with the end in mind. Okay. On to the travel budget tab. If you want to make this spreadsheet view bigger or smaller, just click this little drop down and you can adjust the size. Also, if you make a mistake, just click this little side arrow right here. As you can see here, I have some fixed expenses and variable expenses on the left. Sometimes certain categories come in one lump sum, such as flights, train passes, supplies, or clothing. This would be the fixed expenses. For variable expenses, this is where you can reverse engineer how much you think you will need in each category. For food, how much money do you want to spend per day? How many days are you there for? So if we have $60 per day and we are there for 12 days, then we need $720 in the food budget. This red text will auto-populate, so you only need to insert numbers into column E and G. Same thing with activities. $50 per day for 9 days, then we need $450 in the activities category. I added a few examples below. If you aren't buying anything, just leave as zero. The text that is included in a formula is in purple, so those are the numbers you can change and it will automatically calculate for you in this column with the red text. Because not everyone is from the United States, I didn't put any currency symbols. In the yellow box, you will see that your numbers are starting to total up. It shows this much right now, and you can see that it changes as my purple numbers change. This is the amount of money you need to save for your trip. Of course, if you see your trip is getting unreasonably high, then you will need to cut back on some of the purple numbers. If your trip is in the future, I auto-populated column M for you. So if your trip is in 12 months, you will need to save this much per month. So basically, every month I put X amount of dollars away for vacation. For me personally, I like to park my vacation savings in a high-yield savings account. A high-yield savings account keeps my money pretty liquid, but then I can also earn some interest. We could talk about high-yield savings accounts and sinking funds in another video. Okay, let's move on to the savings tracker. So if we need to save X amount of money per month, then I would like to keep track of that. In this first column, insert the date and then how much money you saved. I love keeping track of where the money came from. So December 31st, I saved $20. Just for fun, I put one of the jobs I had in college here just to feel the pain. I rather put that $20 towards a nice vacation instead of spending it on three boba drinks. Then the last column I have where the money is parked. Usually all my vacation savings will go into a high yield savings account. If I have a bunch of cash, I will usually wait until it's a little bigger before transferring it over to my other account. Account. On the right, you will see the numbers will auto-populate. The green box is the total that you have saved so far. The yellow box is the number from above, basically how much you needed to budget. The red box is how much you still need to meet your goal. Remember that saving $27.40 per day will equal $10,000 by the end of the year. So if you can cut back on eating out or maybe pick up a side hustle, you're going to be able to save up more cash so you can get to that budget goal faster. If you like what you see so far, there'll be plenty more resources that I'll be making, which you can find on my website linked below. I love buying things, but I don't like to feel guilty or stressed after my purchases. So I like to have a good budget that allows me to spend some coins, but still stay on track with my finances, like investing into my retirement, paying my bills, all without having stress. Everything will be linked below. Let's click the next tab, which is the expense tracker. Okay, let's say it's vacation time. Woohoo! So the previous travel budget tab was the proactive part of your vacation planning, and now it's time to spend that hard-earned money. First, go to column M and put in your final amount you saved for your trip. Because not everyone is from the United States, I didn't put any currency symbols. Then, insert your date on the left and your amount spent. I have it here in purple for you. Then, add in your expense description. For the additional notes section, I use this section if I want to make another note on another currency. This spreadsheet is for your own currency, but let's say you are going pretty fast in Thailand and spending some Thai bot at a street market. Put the number here to keep note of that and then when you have time, convert the number and then insert it into the purple text here. You don't want to mix currencies in this spreadsheet or else it's going to be wonky as some currencies are in the hundred thousand. 
In the Categories section, I have some drop-downs for you in the major categories. Pick the category that your expense falls into. If you want to delete it, then just click in the box or move into the box with your arrow keys and click the Delete button. The drop-down menu will stay and the words will be deleted. You will see on the right side you have total spent so far in the green box. The yellow box was the number you inputted. Then the red box will subtract what you spent from your budget. It will show the remaining funds that are left. Right underneath that is the Expense Summary section. This section is pretty gnarly because because it shows how much you spent in each category as long as you use the gray drop down menu. If you don't use the drop down menus, that's fine, as it will still calculate here in the green and red boxes. Also, I made a pretty graph for you so you can see where most of your money is going. If you've seen any of my other travel videos, then you probably know that I like to stay organized. This is mainly because I don't like any clutter in my head and I just like to enjoy myself. Decreasing static stress for me on vacation means having a good to-do list, a packing list, and a daily itinerary. If you're a chill person that doesn't like planning, this video is not made to stress you out. If anything, it will give you even more reason to chill because you know that the most important steps are taken care of. Why be running around when you can just chill? Okay, let's start at the to-do list tab. This section is separated into five parts. Regular to-do list, when booking, one week before departure, one day before departure, and on departure day. The reason I separated it this way is because if everything is in the yellow box on the left, you might accidentally miss something important. Then you are scrambling later on. No thank you. For the when booking section, these are some items that I do so I don't have to do it later. My windows are already open so I might as well just do these items now instead of having to research for them later on. Let's close the loop. Once I finish the task, I'm going to click on the box and the words will be crossed out. These are the tasks that I personally like to do. If you like this video so far, I actually made another video on how to make a to-do list that actually works and I'll link it in the description below. Okay, let's move on to the packing list tab. Feel free to adjust these areas as to your liking. I personally need a lot of clothing and toiletries rows. I separated these areas into clothing, toiletries, documents, tech, accessories, carry-on liquids, vitamins and meds, and extra. Insert your item and the quantity. When you have it packed, check the box. The words will cross out and the cell will turn gray. I also added enough for six people because not everyone packs the same. I don't know if you need all that, but I made it for you anyways. Cheers! Okay, next is version 1 and version 2 of daily itinerary. The way my husband and I like to travel is we like to do one big adventure and then eat for the rest of the day. Our vacations are pretty chill and we love it. Everyone always thinks that we would crazy pack our vacations, but really, life is already crazy packed. When we're on vacation, we like to chill. So version 1 is how I personally like to do my itinerary. Give me food and then we can just do some things. Just fill in the date, day of the week, estimated time, activity name, notes, and website links as needed. I made enough for 31 days in the month. If you scroll down, you will see the top row moves with you. If you scroll to the right, you will see that the left column moves with you. Gotta stay organized when you're on the move. But sometimes there are days where you just need to be really, really organized and on a strict timeline. And this is where version 2 comes into play. Let's click that tab. So this is the version where you can plan everything in 15 minute intervals day by day. Just fill in your date in the pink row at the top. If you scroll down, you will see the top row moves with you. If you scroll to the right, you will see that the left column moves with you. This is cool because if you want to see what you did at day 13 at 3 p.m., you just scroll on over so you don't lose your place. Usually what I like to do with version 2 is leave it as my activities tracker, so it's like my diary in a way. Also, what you may notice is if you write a lot of stuff, it won't wrap text into one cell. I purposely did this so the rows and columns don't get all thick when you are scrolling. If you want to see what you did, then it will show up here at the top. Planning vacations can be stressful, but hopefully it's a little less stressful when you have a game plan. What's even less stressful is having money for your vacation. If you are trying to save for vacation, I'm going to link my money playlist here where I cover budgeting, saving, money habits, and all the things you need to know for financial freedom.